Good morning, everyone. Um, as Jane said, I am Mrs. Kern. Um, I have been at Harrisburg now with Craig. Craig and I both started the same year. Craig has been 21 years starting this year. And um, I've been teaching for a total of 25 years. Um, I got my undergrad at SDSU and just last year I completed my master's degree, which has been a lifelong goal. So I'll have the rest of my CTE um, staff introduce themselves as well. Well, I'll go next. My name is Craig Emmy, and so again, I've been here, yeah, since 2000. So we've seen all the changes, and uh, since that time, we've put in, you know, video boards in the, both the gym and the field, and so we started a huge, you know, video production program. And along with that, I've always worked on the website for many years, and so I also teach a web design class. And so here we are today to share some resources. Okay, I'll jump in next. Um... My name's Deb Rombo. I, gosh, I don't know how many years in education experience I have. Aside from um, working in family consumer science in the school districts, I worked in extension, uh, West River for nine years. And then I've been, this is, I'm starting my seventh year, I think, at Harrisburg. Um, I teach uh, meal planning and I've uh, been focusing on hospitality and tourism uh, with culinary arts. And really excited because um, Tracy and I added um, a new industrial lab that's just about done. So we have some we have some fun things happening um, in our department, and we're going to have more room, which we desperately needed. So. And uh, my name is Ryan Kroger. I'm the business teacher at Harrisburg High School. Um, I've been in education now for nine years and before that I worked in the private sector so I took a little non-traditional approach to getting into ed education. Um, this will be my fourth year now at Harrisburg and I'm excited about a lot of the changes we have going on. Um, we are uh, adding a screen printing room as part of our business curriculum and working with our marketing. Um, so a lot of exciting hands-on stuff we're about to get into so that's a little bit about me. So um, as you can see, if you just click on our names right here, um, once you have the PowerPoint in your hands, it will link you to our email addresses. So if you've got anything specific that you would like to ask us, we're each linked and you should be able to do that. If you would like to get to the presentation that we are going to use today, there is the information that you can be able to get to it. It is also on the South Dakota DOE CTE website. Um, about this conference that you'll be able, be able to access as well. And I also have this at the end of the presentation. So if you're not able to get it now, um, you'll be able to get it at the end. So first of all, we're gonna start with um, Ms. Tara Bassert. Our two A teachers are not able to be with us today um, as they are working the Sioux Empire Fair and they're always in charge of Old Max Farm. But they did leave some information and projects that they do. And as the, is the case with each of us that teach it doesn't really matter what cluster you're in. Um, if you teach in um, an A cluster, I still think there's some facts, human services stuff that's gonna apply to you. So I think you're gonna really enjoy the next 50 minutes. So go ahead, Deb. Okay, um, you, you're just gonna click into the links, yep. Tracy. Okay, so um, we're, we're lucky enough that we're um, mostly down in the same wing together. So we, we do get to work pretty closely, um, which is fun and get to see what, um, what each other's uh, working on and collaborate whenever we possibly can. Um, with the exception of Mr. Emmy is, is um, down by the wellness wing, but we, we get him down, we get him, we lure him down with, with uh, treats, with culinary treats down in our area. Right? Show. <laughs> so, um, so Tara working in, with uh, ag, she has a variety of classes that she teaches during the day. So, um, with a little bit of time that I had to uh, go over some of this with her, I'm just going to kind of go through her um, assignments. And then, like Tracy alluded to earlier, if you have a, a specific ad question for her or for Josh, just please send them an email, and um, I'm sure they will get back to you as quickly as they can, especially after the, the fair is done. So um, for her horticulture and landscaping, um, she uh, included one of her alternate assignments. Um, she really wanted the kids to, obviously, when we're virtual learning, it's really hard to do the hands-on work. So she wanted them to spend as much time as possible um, getting out and doing some landscaping. So she allowed her students um, 
So she asked them to spend that, that 60 minutes or that hour just getting out and trying to get some experience and being as realistic as possible for kids because, right, we all had different responsibilities and, and things that we had to pick up at home and do during our COVID time um, this spring. So if, if her students in this class were out like mowing for a neighbor, she um, obviously pushed for some community service and helping, uh, helping out other people. So planting a tree, tree trimming, um, working with shrubs, gardens, planting gardens, any of those types of things, um, she allowed her students to have some extra time or get earn credit for that. And then they just had to show and explain to her what they did. She also teaches um, intro to ag mechanics. So we have two different options for freshmen. Tracy, you might have to help me. One is um, ag mechanics and is it ag structures? I think so. Okay. Um, so, uh, so freshmen have that choice um, when they come in to take either one of these classes. So because the um, FFA, the state convention was going on during our time at home, um, one of the things that she did was allowed them to, she really wanted her students, because if you're in an ag class, you're in FFA in Harrisburg. So um, she wanted them to get on and be involved in that learning. So then she allowed them to earn points for her class um, by participating in workshops, virtual workshops with um, the state conference. And I think she had some really good feedback from students with that. And a lot of kids um, liked, the, liked having the ability to do that. Um, so intro to ag mechanics. Also, she used Edpuzzle quite a bit in all of her classes, I believe. Um, so one of the things they have to do in there is a lot of safety. So she used her safety videos um, and assigned them through Edpuzzle. Again, a uh, great way to have accountability and know that your kids are actually watching and, um, and then be able to get that feedback and those assessments from her students as well. Okay, and ag processing, um, she incorporated, I worked with her a little bit on this one. She, incorpor she wanted to incorporate um, having the kids use their different units like the pork, chicken, beef, all of those um, in ag processing and actually have them make something at home and get involved in preparing a meal with their families. Um, so, and then taking it a step further, obviously, like they had to share specific things with her, like, you know, how, how did you prepare it? Where did you, was it, for example, if it was a, a cut of beef, where did you purchase it? What cut? Did you go to the locker and actually see different um, cuts that were available? So again, that crossover that Tracy was talking about with um, family and consumer science, again, this was a perfect example. Um, when we are in school, sometimes we work with our ag processing, um, you know, like making butter and doing some of those types of projects that we obviously weren't necessarily able to do because we weren't together. So just shoot them, uh, shoot either her or Josh an email if you have questions about the ag, um, if you want more information, I'm sure they'll share with you. So next is my classroom. And for those of you that don't know, I teach the human services and the education and training. And so I think a lot of things that I have here will apply across the board. So let's start off. Um, when I was pursuing my master's, one of my favorite um, websites to go to was called Cult of Pedagogy. You, it is a blog, it's a podcast, and it has videos of all the latest projects, and, and it's all research-based, and I've gotten some really cool things out of it. I love the author of this blog because she just point blank tells it how it is. Um, when COVID was going on to begin with, she would just get on and say, I don't have anything. I'm just trying to stay alive. And I think she related to so many of the teachers that were part of that blog. So one of the projects that she talks about next is getting to know your students. And so I'm going to show you several activities you can use to get to know your students. And I think this will apply, especially if you're in um, teaching from home or if you're teaching at school or if you have some type of hybrid. So this first one that I have here was on a fax blog that I belong to, Facebook blog. Um, the template is not mine. I did borrow that, but a lot of the projects I came up with. And so the first week of school, I just wanted to get to know my students. And so this actually linked them to tons of activities that they can do um, during that first week. And so um, if you just go through there, one of my favorites I think that you guys could do now since COVID is going on 
is to use Flipgrid and then to title it Two Truths and a Lie. And so they have to film themselves and then the rest of the student body has to watch it and they have to find out what the lie is. So that's something kind of fun they get to do. Um, I do have a contract here. I'm not gonna click it, but Deb and I have our students sign a contract so that they know what the classroom rules are, especially when it comes to the lab setting. And so I have a contract there that I have my students sign as well. And that could be applied to any um, discipline that you are in a lab setting with. So go out and play with this. I think you'll really like it. I also had kids create their own playlists on YouTube. So when we're working on a project, we're able to listen to some of the music that they're doing. Um, you can copy this and then come up with your own activities as you see fit. Tracy, yeah. um, one of the things, we haven't updated our lab criteria yet for COVID. And I know there's been a lot of discussions out there about that. Um, in Harrisburg, we're kind of waiting until we can have a department meeting. Um, but we, I, we will have some updated materials here yep. in the near future because Tracy and I just haven't gotten a chance to work on that yet. Right. So then going back to the cult of pedagogy and the author there, she has a link about different types of icebreakers that you can use um, to get to know your students. And so I will let you play around with that. Um, but one of the things she talked about is an avatar classroom. And so right now, you know, it's, we're really limited in having our students get up and move around in the classroom like we normally would. So what she talked about is creating an avatar classroom. And I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna have a couple of my CTE colleagues log in. I sent them the link last night. So um, the first one would be like blobs or lines. So I'll put the question in here and I'm gonna have my cohorts go in and take one of these, um, so Deb, if you could go in and change one of the names to your name, Ryan and Craig, if you could do the same so that I know that it is you, you can decorate it however you want. Um, if you wanna put a picture in there, that's absolutely fine as well. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to put the question on here. So my first question would be line up according to your shoe size. And so then what I'm going to have do is, did you guys get in? Um, I had to request access. Okay, we'll just go ahead this way then. So okay. what would happen is, is Craig would go in and he would put his name under the name and Deb would put her name in there and Ryan would put his name in there. And so there, we got an avatar, that is their avatar. And so I'm going to ask the question. And so um, what they have to do is then put their name in this, um, PowerPoint um, according to their shoe size. So we're going to say that Deb wears a size 8, so she might go over here. Ryan wears a size 12. Craig wears a size 10. And so they have to go in and use their avatar to ask to answer the question instead of having them get up in the classroom and move about. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? And I really like that. If you go to the bottom of this right here, I have it linked. I ha it's called blobs or lines. And I have several questions listed right here that you can ask your students. Um, and um, another thing that was commented is you can make a copy of this, keep all the slides, and then you can go back. And that is a way for you to get your, to know your students as well. Um, kind of on the same concept is called this or that. And then with this or that, you will see that, um, would you rather live in the country or the city? So if you live in the country, go to the um, left-hand side. If you'd rather live in the city, go to the right-hand side. So I also have tons of questions right there that you can ask your students as well. So that's something you can do in the classroom. You can do it if you're teaching virtually or a hybrid. And that's kind of why I like these activities and I'm excited to do it. If you wanna know how to do it a little bit better, you just go to this link that says the Avatar Classroom. Um, she has about a 10 minute video that will explain how to do this and it's relatively easy if you still don't understand. Then when we, we, we were in COVID, um, a lot of things that was um, coming up on our Facebook blogs were these choice boards. And I love the choice board activity. I, the issue, I, ha I had some issues with it, and so I refined my choice boards. 
So one of the things that teachers were doing is they were putting all these activities up and then students could pick so many each week. The problem that I had was, is I still had my standards to teach and how was I gonna go about this? So one thing that I did was in my um, Human Development two class, I, these were all the different areas that I needed to teach, physical development, emotional development, social development, and so on. So then what I did was I added activities that go under each of those titles. And then I would say we were, were going to do two areas a week. So the first week we're gonna talk about physical development and emotional development. And then the students had to go underneath and pick one of those activities to complete. Um, another thing that I was having issues with is like, how are these, how are these ladies grading all these projects? I don't understand. So then what I ended up doing is I went in and then I did my own rubric for the choice boards and it was really easy. It applied to every single activity. Um, we use Schoology at our school and so I was really, um, it was very easy and convenient just to go in and to grade them and it didn't take me very long at all. So that's one thing I did. In my interior design class, um, what I ended up doing was I put the learning material up here first. So if we were gonna talk about the elements and principles of design, they had to go in and watch the Edpuzzle video first. And then I had actual PowerPoints that they needed to go through. And then once they were done with that, they could go down and then pick the project that they wanted to do. Then the last one, um, actually Frankie Nelson from Bridgewater Emory kind of came up with this one. I went in and added some of my own activities. This is a little bit different. Um, in my facts one class, I didn't use the choice board for the entire COVID. I used it for the last two weeks of school. So then what they ended up doing is just going in and picking the activities that they wanted. Um, students really like the choice boards. And um, if we're put in that same situation, I plan to do it again because they got to pick and choose those things that were of most interest to them. Then if you go over here, um, I wanted to do some things with social media. And so I went to my um, integrationist and I said, what programs are out there that I can use for like, if I want to do my own Instagram, if I want to do my own Facebook, if I want to do my own Snapchat. Um, I know that there's fake book out there and you can create your own Facebook, but the problem is it doesn't save and there are a lot of glitches that I have. And so Mr. Plain says, it is so funny you are asking me. He says, I have created social media templates and I just got done with them. So these are templates that students can go under and you can create a project using the Instagram and all they have to do is download it and then they can put in their own name right here. They can put in their own picture and then their little brief right down here. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. So you'll notice that Mr. Plain gave you access to Instagram, Facebook, a timeline, Snapchat, a newsflash and Twitter. Um, these are all based on um, PowerPoint. Um, he did design them for Keynote, and so the margins might be off a little bit. If you would rather have the Keynote templates, just email me or email Mr. Plain, and we will send you those in Keynote. So what we ended up doing is in my Human Development 2 class, one of the things that um, really frustrated me was one of the standards says that we have to talk about the influences on development. But for those of us that teach, us, teach it, you will know that we don't have a lot of resources out there. So what I ended up doing is I created a PowerPoint with the content on there. So for all my facts teachers, there, there's a resource I think you'll find helpful. Then here is the actual um, project that I came up with using Snapchat. And so this can apply to any discipline. If you want to use the Snapchat, you can kind of use the same criteria. And then you will notice that I have the rubric right here. So this, will, this applies to tons of you out there. And so these are the directions on what I needed them to do. I needed them to go take their own personal pictures of all the different areas that have influenced their life. So then when we got, I was all excited about this. The kids think I'm crazy sometimes because when I get new projects, I get really excited. And um, I ended up with some really cool um, projects, but here is the one that is my favorite. And I do have her permission to use this. And so she talked about the influences on development. She used it in that 
Snapchat type of format. And there is a picture and then there's her reasoning and then they had to do some hashtags for me when they were done. So she did a really nice job on this and she said she had a lot of fun doing it as well. So again, you can just go to that, um, the directions and to the rubric and it's all there and you can use it. Then when we were in COVID, I wanted to come up with a resource guide. And so I kind of used the same format. They had to create a Facebook and it's right here. And then um, here is an actual example of what that um, Facebook looked like. And so this was one of my students. It didn't save the way I wanted it to save, but as you can see, she has the content of which I wanted her to have. And that was the purpose of the project. And then um, again, here is Mr. Plain's template. I went in and I, I changed it a little bit to fit my needs, but all those are right there. So if you have any questions about those social media templates, just let me know and I'd be more than happy to share you anything else I have. Okay, just so you know, I have a neighbor in classroom to Tracy and when she gets excited about her project, we can usually hear her. So, um, so I can attest to the fact that, yeah, she, she gets pretty excited when we come up with something new. So it's kind of fun to, um, for any of you out there that um, have had the opportunity, opportunity to work with another teacher in your area, in your school, it's, it, I didn't ever think I'd have that opportunity. So it's really nice to have somebody to collaborate with and just to bounce ideas off all the time. Um, okay, so uh, in my classroom, I really wanted something um, that would just be consistent for all of my classes. So during COVID, I was teaching um, three different sections of um, culinary. The section three is really, um, they were, so let me back up. We, one of the things that we have started doing in our school since we have the culinary program is we have a, uh, we, we are allowed to serve food to um, our teachers and our staff. So my culinary three students um, are kind of my intern students. They prepare that food. Um, that's kind of their job. And as Mr. Kroger was talking about, we are with our new addition to our CTE wing, we are going to have a, uh, hopefully, a CTE store where we can kind of promote the things that our students do, culinary items, um, hopefully screen printing items, maybe welding products, all of those kind of projects, all those kinds of things. Um, but up to this point, my culinary three kids have basically been um, the ones that just come in and prepare the cookies and, and all those types of things for our teacher orders. So I didn't really have to do a lot of um, curriculum work for them during COVID. We had, I had some other things. They made me some demo videos that I showed to my other classes um, because that was only two or three students. Uh, for culinary one and culinary two, and then I had um, my meal planning class. I just wanted something that was consistent and easy for students to be able to follow. So Tracy, if, um, yeah. So what I did, thank you. So what I did was I set up a, a template for all of my classes. This just happens to be um, a level two uh, culinary. Um, and then most of what the teachers at our school with using Schoology uh, to make it consistent for kids, we listed like week one, week two, week three, et cetera, on our Schoology learning for their e-learning. So they knew where they were supposed to be. So um, if you go to the top really quick, Tracy, um, I don't know if I can, okay, thanks. Um, so pretty simple template. Um, I found something out out there and I kind of adapted it to meet my needs. Um, but again, I color coded it and I wanted it super simple. So I had my goal and objective for this one. You can see that um, basically they needed to stay up to date in the hospitality and tourism industry. So I wanted it to be, um, they had to do some current trends in the industry. So I always had an, an I learn and I practice and an I master. I was required at my school to give my students um, in my, my lab classes choices. So for example, um, for culinary, I couldn't just say, um, do a pantry project or you know pick whatever you want to make and then send me the results because we have to assume that not every student had those resources. So I tried to give at least um, two to three um, options in my iMaster every week. So this was based on a week long project. They would work on this for the week. 
So with the idea that they would go into the I learn, click into that, do that project, and then um, obviously get some I practice. So that's kind of their engagement, right? Find out more research, brainstorm, all of those types of things. And then I would provide links to that. And then uh, the um, I master option, they just had to choose one. So, um, but I kept them consistent for my three classes. So option one for all of my classes would have something to do with writing. Option two was maybe, um, was always my lab option if they wanted to prepare something. And then option three was whatever crazy idea that I was able to come up with. So in this particular one that I wanted to share with you, um, for example, option two, if they did a lab, I have the lab for them and it's linked um, on here. So you'll, you would be able to see that. But I used, a, I used Google, um, a Google form for that. So it kept it easy for me to, to be able to see what they were doing. And then um, I am fortunate enough to have um, a, a mentor chef that comes in, um, Chef Nicholas. Um, so I kind of relied on him a little bit for my culinary classes. And I, he was able to create a, um, uh, basically a beef bar tutorial for me for the students. And so Tracy's clicking into that right now. And it's phenomenal. Um, it's phenomenal. So if you get a chance to watch this, um, especially those of my colleagues out there that I'm teach culinary. This is what I'm about to ask me to be a person. We cannot um, steal Chef Nick, but he's amazing. And um, I will try to share more resources as he's able to help us out this year as well. But um, just try to really change it up a little bit and keep my assignment simple. Like, they had to watch Chef Nick and then send me their five takeaways from what they learned so I could tell that they had watched it. I also did use Edpuzzle quite a bit for some, some safety stuff, um, some knife cuts, those types of things. So kids were able to um, show me some of those things as well. Um, I had, if you notice on that learning page, I had where I didn't, I didn't make it mandatory. The kids could share on um, so there's an example of what my lab forms look like. I just adjusted it for each one of my classes, depending on what the, what the lab would be that week, whether it was like a baking and pastry. Um, and then if you click into the Padlet, Tracy, and um, my students had an option every week if they did a lab or if they just had, wanted to share something, they could go in and put it on the Padlet. I didn't require it. Um, but this, for example, Alexis um, for, was in my baking and pastry for culinary two. So she um, was willing to share an example of something that she practiced with um, working with cake, the cakes unit. So again, I didn't, not every kid is comfortable sharing those things, but I wanted to make it an option. Um, I had, it kind of depended on the week. Sometimes I had really good participation in the Padlet, um, sometimes not. And then I, again, I tried to color code it on here so you could see assessment. I showed them what was recommended um, as far as like, I wanted you to do the I learn and the I practice. I required at least uh, one I master and then it was optional to share on their Padlet. And then um, sometimes I gave them the extra credit opportunity. And most of you have probably used Flipgrid so they could share on Flipgrid if they wanted, um, if, uh, if they wanted to share a, a, a video or a resource that they had. Um, with their classmates. Again, not something that I required of them, but it was, um, it was nice when my students did participate in that. And then um, anything that with Chef Nick that he participated in, I did ask my students to send him a thank you. Because I think that's a really important part of, um, it's awesome that industry comes in and helps us. So I wanna make sure that they are appreciated. A Couple other things that I just wanted to touch on, it wasn't necessarily just during, um, uh, the the COVID situation that we had. Mr. Emmy and I, uh, we weren't able to do it this year because we weren't at school, but um, a year ago, we decided that we wanted to get our students together and do a collaborative effort. So we um, had our students prepare a cooking show segment in my culinary class. Um, we did it in our culinary, uh, culinary one. And um, Mr. Emmy came down and basically made uh, Mrs. Kern and I's lab looked like a, um, a studio, right? A production studio. It we was had, awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. Mr. Emmy, four cameras, three cameras. We had a, a top camera. And if that's something you're really interested in, I can send you more information. Um, but basically this, what I, what I'm sharing on here with you is just what I had my students go through 
as far as in their group work. Um, you know, they had to come up with uh, what dish they wanted to make. Obviously, I gave them some different criteria that, you're, that you'll see here. Um, we did some practicing before our on-camera time, but we probably spent, uh, we devoted quite a bit of class time to this. Three, three weeks, Ms. Remy, four weeks. Uh, by the time that everybody filmed, and then we were able to share them on our district website. Um, so it was really, it really incorporated so many different things for kids as far as speaking and planning and preparation, culinary skills, um, you name it. And then Mr. Emmy's class um, helped us. He, they taught my students how to edit their videos. Um, and like I said, we only got to do this one year. So we have things that we definitely want to tweak. But it was it it was an it was amazing. It was it was so much fun to do this together. And we got our department got a lot of attention because people were like, "What are they doing? What are they filming down there? What's going on?" Um, and even though our kids were nervous about it, I think when they walked away from it, they were pretty proud of what they came up with. And then jumping back to Flipgrid really quick, and you don't have to pull it up, Tracy, because it's a different one. But one of the things I did. Um, year long and last year is I wanted my uh, I wanted my culinary kids to be mentors so um, we did a flip grid sharing that we called culinary classmates with the middle school um, with Miss Mellon's class uh, with her pre culinary kids um, in eighth grade at uh, our South Middle School and so we would my kids would prepare a, a lesson they would they would team up with one or two middle schoolers prepare a lesson on Flipgrid and then wow. feedback. And we bounce those back and forth, like teaching them knife cuts, giving them critiques about their basic plating. Um, and we had some, we've had some great feedback wow. on that too. So, but if you have any questions, um, please don't be afraid to ask. Everything's still a work in progress. So yeah, Deb, I have those videos, those pictures of that cooking show. Do you want me to show that real quickly? Yeah. Yeah, if you have one, if we have time, yeah, go for it. Okay, is that okay, Mrs. Kern? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'll share my screen. I'll show you the picture setups, and then I've got, uh, and then I've got a show of a couple of them that we kept. Well, we kept them all, of course, but a couple that we previewed. And let's see if this will all go through. And now with our new lab, we're really excited to be able to to see where we can take this, and hope hopefully we'll be in school this spring so so we'll be able to to tweak it a little bit um actually i'm going to come back to it during my presentation i have to do a little change in my system preferences evidently with my update with my computer so when i come back then i'll do an update and i'll show you the cooking show so i'll let Thank you, you. Move on. if you want to go on mr kroger go ahead and i'll, I'll come back to it okay. all right so a few things that in the business classroom, I just pulled up some resources that we like to use. Um, a lot of these I found during distance learning that the project-based um, assignments tended to work pretty well for the kids. Um, they seem to enjoy those. So uh, the first one here is uh, financial football. And I, I really enjoy doing this during the fall or during Super Bowl time. Um, it's just a, a good way for kids to hop in and kind of break up how things are going, you know, the monotony of the, the school year. And so on that, they sign up for an account and then it's a video game based. If they answer a question, they get to pick a play they want to do. So a sweep or whatever, whatever play they want to run a, you know, a slant or, and uh, they also have a, a financial soccer. And so they play either, I think they can do one, just a player versus computer or player versus player if they're together. Um, so that's kind of fun. The kids enjoy that. Um, just a, a good, fun thing for them to do and uh, really was real well received. Um, and then I also, uh, the Uber driver, Uber game, I've been doing this with my classes for the last three years and, and they really enjoy this. Um, the Next Gen Personal Finance, which I'll talk about a little bit, they created a guide as well that corresponds with this assignment. Um, so it's a good way to kind of tie this into a 45 minute, you know, uh, project for your kids or it might take them about 30 minutes. Um, but they hop in and they have to decide how they're going to basically talk them through living in a gig economy, which there's been a lot of this information coming out in the news lately. Um, I think I saw by 2028, they're anticipating over 50% of the jobs, uh, someone to have a, uh, to students to have a gig based job. So they got to kind of learn how to navigate this. So it's kind of interesting for them. 
Um, but they make decisions and then based on how they make their decisions determines how they do in the game. So they're living out in San Francisco and they're having to survive on a, a gig job. So it's kind of interesting, talks them through some customer service things and um, so soft skills, which we're really big on in our department. So I really, I really enjoy that game and the kids seem to, you know, get a lot out of that as well. And then uh, I like this, uh, this comes from Next Gen Personal Finance as well. It's the uh, time for payback. And I know a lot of you in your different classes talk about life after high school. So this could really apply for any, you know, any curriculum area. You just hop in and you go through here and you have to decide based on what you decide, if that's a, a two-year degree or a four-year degree, are you going to get your money back, what you put in for your investment? And so you have to make some decisions like, how are you going to live? Are you going to live in the dorms? Um, are you going to live off campus? It also talks them through the, you know, their GPA and are they going to live in campus? Are they going to private school, public school? And so I think it really um, kind of highlights the the different decisions that kids have to make and really get some thinking maybe outside the box. And I, I really, really like this assignment. I think it really opened the eyes for the, the kids. Um, and then uh, living paycheck to paycheck. This one was really tricky. Um, I really like this one, but this one, the kids get, it's pretty excruciating for them because it talks about, you know, what happens in life when you don't have enough money. So if you can't pay for your kids is, lunch meal what are you gonna you know you have to make choices are you can't buy new shoes for your kid you you have 20 or 100 bucks left in your account and you have to pay your electrical bill or you have to buy um i don't know tickets for homecoming dance or whatever it is it's so it's it's really excruciating for the kids to have to make those decisions and learn about budgeting and sacrifice and by the end they get done and they're like geez getting getting old's rough and so I think that's a really good one for budgeting. A lot of you teaching personal finance, I think would really enjoy that. Um, and the kids, I think it's a real eye opener for them. Um, and then uh, I teach uh, in my personal finance class, uh, we used to have the junior achievement come in and help us with our stock market challenge. Well, with the you know, COVID situation hitting, that was no longer an option to have guests come in. And so with the fall, with, with us also not having, uh, being able to have guests come in and speak, um, this Wall Street uh, Survivor is a really good website where you can create a free account, you can create a class, and then it's real um, stocks, but you get like $100,000 in virtual money that you have to invest. And so you go through and you invest your money and you pick your stocks. And then I always tell the kids, if you guys finish better than me, I'll give extra credit to whoever finishes better than me. So it's kind of an ongoing thing. I might give them like five to 10 minutes on a Friday to hop in and kind of look and see where their stocks are at and see if they want to make any changes. Um, but they can really do that on their own. So for virtual learning, that works really good. And, and I think it really highlights the importance. Now, it's really hard right now with the stock market, you know, being so up and down for them to kind of see. But I think it's an important time when the stock market is, you know, kind of down or fluctuating a lot for them to see that things can change. And, um, but just the importance of, of kind of being aware of stocks and those sort of things, I think it, it, it kind of is a good supplemental lesson to our uh, investing unit. And then um, I also teach uh, economics and, and I use this occasionally for my intro to business uh, class as well. I really enjoy Seinfeld. Most of my kids nowadays are not familiar with Seinfeld. I think maybe one out of 20 will, but they enjoy the humor in a lot of these. Um, one caveat you do have to go through, I'd recommend uh, going in and uh, pre-viewing these because some of them might not be classroom appropriate. Um, but this guy, uh, this person composed, uh, compiled all of these videos that apply to economic concepts and uh, put, them, put them in one database and they're all different two to three minute clips from Seinfeld. So I like to put these in my lessons um, and just kind of the kids enjoy the, the humor side of things. And then I can kind of explain what's going on. So that's a nice little database. Um, I also, um, why don't we go to TurboTax quick, Tracy, and then I'll, I might have to share my screen on that Nearpod. Um, the, yeah, Turbo yeah. the TurboTax uh, simulation. Um, this is a really good one if you're teaching a taxes unit uh, for personal finance, because the kids go through and it's just like the real deal um, going through and, and uh, submitting your taxes. So this comes from next gen personal finance, but I thought this was, was just wonderful because they go through and they, they get a W-2, you give the kids a W-2 and they have to input their information into TurboTax. 
and it, it's just awesome. There's a link to the interactive. So, so this little guide is here, but if, if Tracy, if you click on that blue link there, it'll take you to the simulation and then they'll go through. And the nice thing is this, it does say it's a test account. And so you can go through and they just create their, um, you know, they put their email address in and then they just, uh, pat, uh, I think, I think we give them specific, if you go back Tracy to the interactive, I don't think they actually have to put their information in. I think there was a way to do that without, I'd have to double check on that, but, um, but yeah, this is a really great one. And, and we really enjoyed doing that. Um, the kids, uh, I think on the teacher's guide, it tells you like, you can just have them create a random email and a random, you know, they don't put their personal information in there. So I think that's how we got away, you know, giving out their private information. Um, but that was a really good lesson. Um, going back. All right, I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Brian, Brian, Brian yeah. I have mine up, so you can just use mine. The lessons oh. that I created. Sure. So during um, during this uh, COVID situation, um, I started using Nearpod a lot. I kind of experimented with it a little bit. Tracy um, got me excited about learning about it. Um, our school has a subscription to the uh, uh, help me out here, guys. Ed Puzzle. Um, but the Nearpod really gives you a lot of extra functionality. Now they do give you a free kind of basic account, which normally doesn't include the student paced version. However, when this COVID uh, started, um, they gave everybody that had an account that, uh, with students a free student paced option, which is wonderful um, because then your kids can come in and they can do it on their own. So like Tracy and I, what we would do is we'd, we'd record audio on each slide, just like we were given a, a lesson. And then we'd move through and then you could ask them, you could, you could quiz them. Um, I have, I put my flip, flip grids right in here as well. So that the kids really enjoyed that as well. Um, you can see what you can input videos in there really easy. And then I see they just added in the last week, um, the ability to add just like, um, Ed Puzzle does, you can pause the YouTube video and put in questions in there as well. So they just added that uh, feature in this week. So we really enjoy using that. Um, there's a lot of cool discussion things you can do, collaboration boards, um, where you it just post little um, stick it, post it notes so you can see what everybody else is thinking about different topics. So that kind of keeps it more interactive and really from teaching remotely, I enjoyed watching the kids' Flipgrid videos and I liked that I could go to just one place to view all this. There's a cool draw it feature as well where you can put up a slide um, and have like fill in the blank section, just take a picture of a worksheet. Um, for example, like that uh, taxes worksheet I had, I could, I could put up that um, little text box in there and then I could have the kids just write in the, uh, the slide and it records their, their writing. So that's a cool way to kind of quiz your students and um, I think that's something that I definitely plan on doing more of. Um, Students so, really, really like the Nearpod a lot. Yeah, it, and it's great because right now we're doing a blended model where we're going to have some kids at home, some kids in school. And I can have the student paced version as part of this. They're doing it on their own. Or if they're hopping in at the same time, I can have it um, you know, going synchronously and, and the kids are hopping in and they're just filling it out real time. And so I'm quizzing them. If some kid's sleeping in the back, I can see, hey, they haven't submitted their answers. So it's just a good way to make sure that everybody's really locked in and paying attention to your lessons. Um, so I like that interactive component to it. And I would recommend, uh, you know, at least exploring it. I went ahead and paid for the paid version just because I was running out of space because I used it so much and just added so many videos and different things in. Um, but I definitely think it was worth the investment. Um, so that's a, that's a few things, um, that we do here in our business classroom, as far as remote learning. Ryan, like Kahoot, right? They, Nearpod has templates out there too, that are already there that you can like add to basic lessons and stuff. So you don't always have to start from scratch either. Yep. So there's I, lessons already out there. Because you get ideas from that too. And, and you can import your uh, PowerPoints right in there. And so you don't have to start from scratch in your PowerPoints either. Okay, so the next one is Mr. Josh Christensen. Um, as you can see, I have, um, everything is linked here and we're, we're kind of running short on time and I wanna make sure we get Mr. Emmy in. But Mr. Christensen did share some of his projects that he does about C-Camp drawing assignment and that looks pretty cool. 
Um, here is a project that he does with the receiver hitch. Um, another one is Tinkercad. He had shared that he uses Tinkercad quite a bit. For those of you that don't know what that is, that's a 3D model program that'll help create 3Ds. Um, I even use that in my interior design class when we talked about furniture design. Um, I had um, someone come in, teach Tinkercad, and then my kids actually designed a piece of furniture using the topics that we had discussed in class. And then we actually printed them on the 3D printer and the kids thought that was pretty cool. So he talked about Miller Open Book for welding. He says he uses this resource a lot and would encourage that for anybody that does welding. Here is a video he found when we were in COVID talking about welding tips and tricks. And he says, this is a great resource. And the last one, and I think all of us know this, um, is the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. And he says there's a lot of educational activities. So any egg, um, food, natural resources, industrial tech, I would encourage you to go out and to look at some of the projects he has um, hyperlinked here because they're really good. Okay, Mr. Emmy. Okay, I'm gonna try to share the screen one more time, see if it all works the way I need it to. So let's give this a, Give this a run for money and here we go. So let's start off with, uh, I'm gonna go back to the culinary. This is, can everybody see this okay? Can everybody see this okay? Yeah. So you see it okay? So this was a setup for the, um, for the show and we had four cameras. In fact, we ended up taking the near off and then we put the stands across the, uh, we put the stands across the top and then we also put a camera that went all the way down. So then if we take a look, you know, you can put in a, um, and can everybody see this one okay? This is kind of one of the virtual backgrounds. And then if we take a look here, I will then show you um, a couple of the videos that it looks like here. And so like this one with one of them here, and then they put in a virtual Hi, background. Hi, Tasty Tiger. This is Lake Corey Levi Smith here today. Today, I can't making see, Craig. some oh, can't yummy pan-fried pineapple. Oh. Okay. Um, so here we've got a pineapple. This is the- Let me try one more time here. Share a screen. I think it went off. So there we go. Let's try that again. Can you see that one okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. And so then there we have this one here, and they started off with their virtual background. Hi, welcome to Taste of Tiger. This is Lake Corey and Levi Smith here today. Today we're making... I'm going to fast forward it here. There was a top camera. And some basil, which is optional. So here we have our pineapple and we're going to take... And then we went through, there's a side camera. Yeah, just nice little song back and forth. And so then the students got to then choose from four angles. We use Final Cut Pro. going to take the two-thirds cup of brown sugar and two teaspoons of... And they then got to put their entire show together. And I'll just kind of fast forward. And you can kind of take a we look at the we'll difference. We'll give it a couple more seconds to check on it. Yeah, so we got a little more time. And so that's how one of the shows looked um, when we were finished. It was just a great time. We had a lot of fun um, setting that one up. So that was a great, great time. Um, I'm going to then share one of my other screens here as well. And I'm going to pull that one. So now I'm going to jump over to um, the, I'll jump over to the code HS. Um, you'll see that on my link on the presentation, um, on my presentation there. And uh, one of them was the code HS um, for like web design. And I'll show you what that screen looks like. And I'll skip forward here, get this out of the way. So on the code HS and the code HS webinar, um, they kind of gave it to us for free for the COVID-19, but uh, now it's, um, they would, for a prescription or a subscription, it would cost about $2,600. So um, for the entire thing. So let me show you what that looks like, but it's very, very cool of how it works. And let me show you what that looks like here. I got to get the screen out of my way for a second. And so I will show you that first. So in a nutshell, um, once you get into it and once you get rocking and rolling, um, they just the assignments. You can come in there, choose a whole bunch of stuff, um, different web, web design stuff, code stuff, CSS stuff. They got a lot of different coding programs. But in a nutshell, I can see the students if they 
if it was gray, they didn't work on it. If it was yellow that they started to work on it. And if it was green, they completed the lesson. And so every one of these lessons, you can just dive right into it. It'll tell you exactly, they give you the video, the YouTube video, the quiz, examples, exercise. You can go into a style sheet, um, you pull it back up, you can, it'll tell you what to do, you run your code, um, you can check your code, it'll show up pink if they didn't do the particular ideas. So it is awesome. It is amazing what this program does. So it's 2,600 bucks, but it's, you know, something that I want to go into and get here for this next year because um, it is, it does everything for you. Plus they can start, stop, come back into it anytime they want to. And then it'll show you, I can see all the completions and I can just do all the grading right here online. They also give you a webinar and here it is right in here. They will talk about- uh, Click into this and actually go directly to that comment and start. They'll talk about for a full hour exactly how everything works from start to finish. So that's absolutely amazing. Now I'm gonna jump into the uh, full-time filmmaker in the cinematography world and, um, and ISM films. Um, so one of them, uh, if you're in the cinematography world, this is absolutely amazing. This is about 749 for the whole program. But this uh, Parker Walbeck, he has uh, been there, done that, and he's got tons of YouTube videos, like everything from shooting, whether it's real estate, um, you know, dance videos, wedding videos. Um, he really goes through and he shows you the gear, the lights, how does he edit um, with his computer. And, but even his YouTube videos alone, this Parker Walbeck is absolutely not so crazy phenomenal, right? And so I send this a lot off to my students and help us with my curriculum. Uh, if you want the whole program for more detail, the 749, but even all of his YouTube videos are just amazing. Um, if you just go in and search for um, in YouTube and you search up for Parker Walbeck, I won't do it right now for sake of time, um, we'll send that off. One thing I did want to show you real quickly was that um, even one of my students, oops, got right back out of it again. I'll show you this real quickly. Um, Spencer Larson has created a lot of cool things. And I wanted to just kind of show you, he's done a lot of wedding videos and he set up his own business here this last couple of years. Um, so if you go to his particular page, um, just as an example of one of my students have just really taken off and really likes this industry. And in his video section, as we fly on down, all the wedding videos he's done, dance videos he's done. Um, it's just absolutely amazing um, and incredible to look at and to watch. Uh, one in particular here. So just absolutely amazing. So he made a business out of it. And I know there was another uh, student in a different school. He did like 18 wed weddings, you know, in one summer or not one summer, but an entire year. So, you know, some of these students are making 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 in a year already. And they're sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And they just really took hold, got their own little camera, started off small, uh, get all the tips and tricks that they needed to. But so the cinematography world, I teach that the video production world for all the activities. Um, I teach that as well um, as far as um, uh, for all the athletics that we do on our video boards. So in a real brief um, session, that was kind of, I just want to share those resources, but um, the Code HS, the ISM Films, um, that's my last one. Say, Craig, we might get cut off. So if we get cut off, we know why, but keep talking. Nope, that's okay. I understand. Um, so let me show you the ISM films. We had a chance with the grant program through South Dakota to go out to Hollywood. And so their curriculum is about 549 a year. And if you can still see my screen, can you still see my screen okay? Can you still see my screen okay, Tracy? Yep. 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 And so real briefly, this year program for all your film schools, um, we have a lot of students that go into film school down to Arizona, California. Um, this one is just absolutely amazing as well. And so they, when you want to talk about um, tools, this one here has everything from the, from the camera to the gear. Um, let me get back out of that one. 
it's called Sneak on the Lot, and we got to produce a film out there uh, once we were out there. And now uh, my connection's going a little bit weird here. Let's try this again. And so on their curriculum page, reload it one more time. Something's not happy with me right now. I'll give me one second. I'll show you this in the next 30 seconds. And, uh, but this one here, um, this Chet and Fletch, they put this program together to um, try one more time here. They put this program here together just to help out filmmakers around the world and students and teachers. And let me see if I can get into the curriculum side of things. And so they're the same way. They've got all the curriculum, all the courses. And so everything, every detail from, um, from script writing, the programs, to the cameras, to the gears, to the blocking, um, setting up your crews, how do, you, how do you get actors, actresses, and you know, how do you edit the films, um, color grading, green screen. They even have a place where you upload your film and they have critics that will actually um, go through and critique your films for you. Um, it is as detailed as everything you could possibly imagine for the film industry uh, that you would have in Hollywood. And so they put together the same thing, the whole program, and you can see the percentages of what the students have worked on. And so it's really, really in depth and crazy, but it does the entire curriculum for you. And so that's it. I wanted to, uh, I'll stop sharing. I just want to share the little resources. So I, I know our time is up and if you guys enjoyed the presentation, if you enjoyed the Bitmoji backgrounds and you want to learn more about it, I have tons of links there that will teach you how to do a Bitmoji classroom. Better yet, just email me and I'll Zoom with you and I'll lead you through the process of how to do that. I would, I would love to sit down and, and to do that with you. So just send me a quick link. So that concludes our presentation. Jane, is there anything else? No, oh, that's all. Fantastic. Thank you for such great resources, everyone. And uh, if you want to look, see more, they uh, have the resources linked on our website. So uh, absolutely fantastic. Make sure everybody takes a look at the last general session here that will start in just three minutes. So have a great day, everyone.